Hey guys, welcome to Sauce Boring in this very dark room. I have not been detained here. It's actually because we get to see behind the scenes the brand new BMW M5. And to learn more about that car, I have with me Dirk Hacker. He's the head of R&D for the BMW M brand. We've met before, we've talked about a lot yep. of cars, but now it's finally time to talk about this new one. M5. So let's talk about the new M5 sedan, G90. Tell me first about the drivetrain, then we're gonna dive into suspension, steering, and some okay. other topics. Okay. So what do we have here? So what we have here, so we have for the first time a plug-in hybrid in an M car, in an M5 car, and that's the second step of our electrification. So we started with a mild hybrid in the X5 and X6M, mm -hmm. and for the new M5, for the seventh generation, we have had the discussion, what will be the next best powertrain? And from the beginning we thought it was because not only of CO2 and regulation, but also for performance, a good idea to take in a plug-in hybrid, and a plug-in hybrid, that means also to have the chance to get real E-range with the car. So this car can go about 69 kilometers, poor electric mm -hmm. on one side, but on the other side also to use the electric to empower the V8, very well known from the um, predecessor. Mm -hmm. And this combination of the electric engine and the V8 um, combustion engine leads to more than 100 horsepowers on plus to the predecessor and more than 250 newton meters plus up to 1,000 newton meters in the new M5. Gotcha. And power-wise, we're talking about 727 PS. That's right. The HP probably like 717, 718, somewhere okay. there. Now, let me ask you this. Of course, the car is a little bit heavier. It's about yep. 400 kilograms heavier. Yeah, it's about that. Than the F90. How did you offset that weight? So when, when we are thinking about um, what will be our target for the cars, we said we must start at the performance of the predecessor and to combine um, the higher weight also with this performance wishes and targets. We have done a lot of additional struts and special setups, special tire specification. And one very good benefit is that the high voltage storage is underfloor, beginning from the driver's seat to the rear axle. So that also leads to a better center of gravity, a lower center of gravity. So on one side we have higher weight but on the other side, we have lower center of gravity, wider axis, and longer wheelbase. And that is a combination which helps to get also a good performance and dynamic in the car. So the one question people will ask me is, how is this drivetrain different than the one in the BMW XM? Are there any hardware changes yep. and any software changes? Both, both. So when we t take a look on the engine, the V8 engine, it's nearly the same. Also the gearbox with the E-machine. But the cooling system is completely different and also the exhaust system is completely different because we have another package of the car and the setup is completely different. So okay. we want to do it very seamless, not to give the driver the feeling now electric is working, now the combustion engine. We want to combine both to the best um, optimum. That means where the combustion engine needs a little bit support, we use the electric one to give this momentum into the powertrain. So what's the overall weight of the car? 2,445, 2,440. Uh, about 50, that okay. depends a little bit on the standard and on the options. So as standard, we have the sunroof that increases the weight a little bit. We have the high voltage storage. We have also the, the electric engine. So that leads to this weight of about 2,400 kilograms. kilograms. So of course, being a little bit heavier towards the nose also, are there any hardware changes that you've done to the car or I any... think you can see a lot of struts and combinations here from the from this to this in the front. So we have two levels in the front of increasing the stiffness. Mm -hmm. So one level is the higher level, mm -hmm. and we have also a very big amount of additional components underfloor in the front, but also to the end of the car mm -hmm. to make it more stiffer, more precise, more stable. Um, with the power handling um, on the track, for example. Gotcha. And if we're talking just the power coming out of the S68, how much power is that engine delivering? Uh, 585 horsepower. Okay. And the electric motor on its own? 145 kilowatt okay. or 197 horsepower. But it's not a combined power output, right? No, I think that is also a mi little misunderstanding. It's not um, possible to add both mm -hmm. components because they have an, uh, different sections where they're added together. Mm -hmm. And that means that both components leads to 727 horsepower. 
Zero to 60 or zero to 100 kph? It's about like the predecessor. Okay, perfect. And then when you're talking about the power that you're getting in the M hybrid mode, yeah. what's the maximum output there? Are you getting the full 727? Yes. Okay, so full, okay, got it, perfect. Any other upgrades here as far as cooling? Yes, but we can't see it. You can it. see it, of course, yeah. We have it on the floor for the cooling system for the engine, oil, water. We have also additional cooling systems on the left and on the right side because we want to, uh, to go a long distance without any degradation. Mm -hmm. We test the car also under high temperature conditions and we also offer a special version for um, countries with higher temperatures because we want to offer a hybrid car which um, can go a long of distance um, without any power loose. We could say that the cooling package is bigger or better than on the XM or different? I, I think it's different. Okay. It's also more perspective for the racetrack capability. Mm -hmm. So this car works very well on the racetrack. Mm -hmm. It's not a track tool, but it works on the racetrack. And the requirements for the racetrack capability was a higher one than for the XM, for example. Okay, suspension, chassis, any particular upgrades on the car to deal with the weight, of course, and the size of yes. the car. So we have um, coil springs in front and rear. We don't have any active roll stabilization. Okay. So we use the coil springs in combination with a new timber system by Bielstein. It's um, a different one to the okay. predecessor. I think we tuned it very good up in this way that you can offer more comfort for everyday driving mm -hmm. on one side and on the other side in the Sport or Sport Plus setup, higher um, damping forces to fix the car on the on the track. And for the first time in an M5, we also offer the rear steering system. Okay. Because with a- Standard? Standard, okay. standard. So because we thought um, with a wheelbase, also with a track width, also with the dimensions and the weight of the car, this is a very good function uh, system to improve the agility and dynamic of the car. And you can't feel this single function, you only feel this precise handling and dynamic of the car comparable to the predecessor. Mm -hmm. Limited slip differential? Yes. So. From the function, the same we know from the predecessor. Okay. Also the MX drive system is very similar to that. We have also as an option the carbon, the M carbon the ceramic brakes. Okay. That's also an option with a carbon roof mm -hmm. as an option. Okay. So it's up to you more to do it exclusive, luxury or more sport brief on this side. Got it. EPS steering, any difference from the XM ones? I mean, the more comparable? Yeah, it's, a, it's a different system because the architecture is a different one. Mechanically uh, different or softer different? No, also mechanical because okay. we d go with different gear ratio. So it's very special for that. But we, we use overall a similar concept, um, but it's adapted and fi refined for the use of the M5. Mm -hmm. Turn radius quite good, better than before. Similar, similar so. to the predecessor, but with a longer wheelbase. So I think you can handle the car in the same space like the predecessor. Sure. Let's talk about wheels and uh, tire options. So what do we have in the front and in the back? So we have in the front um, 20 inch wheels and the rear 21 inch wheels. We offer three different designs of the wheels. We don't offer different dimensions, but we also offer a sportive setup specification or more standard everyday driving specification. So it's up to, to the customer to decide which characteristic he preferred for the tires. And what's the tire size as far as the width? With the width we have in the front 285 and in the rear 295. So it's very close together because we think it's the best option to get a very balanced um, performance of the car. We need the side force also on the front axle and in the rear, the white for, for traction and so on. So this combination, only a small difference between front and rear um, is our favorite. Gotcha. Not only in the M5, but also in, in other cars. And I can bring up the XM. I know they're not similar, but I guess the overall architecture as far as digital that. Are there any other differences that you will see in the two cars? Because a lot of people complain about the XM being a little bit tricky with a drivetrain, but anything else that separates the two completely, like something that's new on this package compared to that one? I think it's not so easy to compare because it two complete different cars. Mm, for sure. So the refinement and the setup of the powertrain is here a different one to the other one. To the XM, you want to get a very aggressive style um, depending also to the exterior. It's, mm -hmm. it's very so more like neck snapping. Yes. And this one you say more like progressive power delivery. Pro 
progressive power delivery, yeah. um, like a uh, effect catapult, yeah. and here it's more momentum from the beginning, very good to to um, to control. Okay. So I think it's a different characteristic using the same technique. Mm -hmm. um, this car is a newer one in the setup. Yeah. When you think about the future, perhaps you can also uh, take a look if this is more the favorite also for, for next generations um, to do it also for the other car. Gotcha. So I'm going to ask you more of a technical question, maybe a more tricky question maybe there. But a lot of times people expect a car to be very, very stiff and no body roll. But from my driving experience, I actually enjoy a little bit of body roll because it gives you the sensation of lateral forces and you kind of feel the tires a little bit more. With this car, would you say that you could make it even stiffer if you want to? or? you're going more towards the comfort level and feeling those level of force versus being like a stiff track car all the uh, it, time. It's not a stiff track car because it's not yeah. a track tool. So okay. you have the possibilities with the damping forces to control the car all the time, also on the track. And I think for me, the most important thing is not the stiffness of the car. It's more a very good road holding of every wheel. So to put the wheels on the track, all four wheels, that's the most important thing um, for a good performance. And how to handle it, that's different. And stiffer doesn't mean it's better for the road hold, um, uh, holding and uh, um, stability. Um, I think you, you need a very good compromise to control the body movement, the wheel control, and um, to keep the car on the track. Gotcha. Top speed, we haven't talked about that, I totally forgot about it. More than 300 kilometers, 305. So, so 305, okay. And that's with the optional M driver's package or yep. it's just standard? Okay, so that's the optional. Okay, yep. perfect. Final question, why no carbon bucket seats? In, in, in these days, I think the carbon bucket seats, they are very, very, very sportive. Mm -hmm. We prefer that for the M2, M3 and M4. Okay. Only in the predecessor special model M4, M5 CS, CS we offer that. I think to the character of this car for a high performance business sedan, it would be too much. I think to start with this and is the right way because it's a complete new seat renovation. You feel fine, you feel comfortable, but you have also enough holding in the seat that in this kind of cars um, the better solution. And it kind of makes sense to maybe save those seats for some other, maybe, products <laughs> in the future. All right, so goes into production July, market launch in November. Yeah. I guess pricing in the US about $119,000, and I guess in Europe, 144,000 euros. So that's the final point I wanted to make. Well, Dirk, thank you so much. Guys, if you want to watch the track review, you can watch that video. I drove the car quite a bit today. We'll have a chance to drive the car in the fall once again, and then we can talk more about other details. But as always, thank You're you welcome. for your time. Really appreciate it. And You're we'll welcome. see you next time.